you remember at our last lecture, we took up the subject of how to keep awake. And on looking about me, I noticed that many of you uh, did not seem quite to catch the idea. Today, therefore, we are taking up the subject of how to sleep. And I am hoping for a little better response. Now, in order to make the thing clearer to you, I will take up first the causes of sleep, second, methods of inducing sleep, third, methods of avoiding sleep, and fourth, how to wake up, which is very important. <laughs> first, causes of sleep. Sleep is induced by the blood leaving the brain, thus. Or, as in the case of alcoholics, the brain leaving the blood. Now, there are several methods of drawing the blood sufficiently away from the brain to induce sleep. There is, for example, a hot pine bath before retiring. Sprinkle the salts in. Uh, nothing like those old pine needles. Test the bath. Oh, just a little too hot, I guess. Of course, there's always the alternative method of not taking the hot pine bath. In this case, the man has succeeded only in putting his left foot to sleep. But that's something. A little more each night, and he'll soon be cured of his insomnia. Now, another method is a glass of hot milk just before retiring. Don't forget to put the milk back in the ice box. And, uh, hello, what's this? What do you suppose this is? Cold lobster? Yes, hey, that is cold lobster at that. I'd give it a try. Not bad, not bad. Yeah, I got a little too much that time. Well, that's all for tonight. Up we go. Up. Oh, what's that? Coleslaw? <laughs> Be done. Coleslaw, yes, sir. Well, now, let's see what else we got here. Let's see. Well, I guess I better use a fork on this. Mm-hmm. Funny these things never tasted like this at dinner. There we go. That's over this side, a little chicken. A little chicken. Get some of that dressing in there. Oh, well, I might as well be comfortable about it. Now, this will fix up that insomnia, all right. On the whole, in using the hot milk method, it is better to have the milk brought to you by someone else after you've gotten into bed. We now come to a study of those factors which send the blood to the brain, thereby making sleep impossible. You will notice that the patient is having a little trouble finding a place for his head. This is known as insomnia or chronic pillow inflation. Chief among the methods of keeping blood in the brain is worry. You can worry better sitting up. Worry can be caused by putting your mind on any one thing. No matter what it is, you'll find it easy enough to worry about it in the middle of the night. There's a theory that if you count imaginary sheep jumping over a fence, you'll induce sleep. This has been proven to be a fallacy, as the patient is likely to start worrying about one of the sheep not quite making it. They seem to be running all right now. One, two, three, three and a half, four, five, six. Oh, oh, there they go. I know it, I know it. Now, another thing which keeps the blood in the brain and prevents sleep is noise. Any unaccustomed noise strikes the eardrums and stimulates circulation in the brain. Among the most common of disturbing sounds is the flapping of a window shade. Well, uh, you gotta fix that, I guess. There we go. Get that chair. Oh, back. Right into there, now fix it all up. Nice, that's right. Set those pillows down. Trying to get a little sleep. Oh, uh, we go. Up today. Uh, now we're set. Oh, for God's sake, what's that? Well, you might as well get up and fix it. Get up and fix it. You won't get any sleep if you don't. Seems as if the guy never got any sleep around here. Now, shut up. Uh, I get to bed early. The sound does not have to be a loud one to cause sleeplessness. A mosquito doing a spiral from a high altitude will do the trick. Here he comes. 
Uh, now wait just a minute and then you can get him when he lights. Take it easy. Take it easy. Ah! Well, missed him. Well, try and bite through this, you know. In some forms of sleeplessness, the patient is not only unable to sleep, but is unable to stay in bed. This is known as the leaping jitters or the two o'clock bounce. This condition is induced by alcoholic excesses and manifests itself by a pounding of the heart, tightening of the throat, causing suffocation, and a cold moisture appearing on the forehead. If the patient had not indulged his appetites to the detriment of his health, he would not be in this condition. And it is a lesson that all of us should take to heart. Oh, shut up and mind your business. You see? He's in a state of nervous irritability as well as sleeplessness. The only cure for this is not to go to bed at all. Oh, I'll go to bed when I like. One of the main causes of sleeplessness, however, is bodily discomfort in the bed due to faulty bed making. This results in the peekaboo blanket and the side slip combined with the riding pajama top. You will note that the sleeper's back is entirely bare. <laughs> Because here it is talking. We have here a pamphlet issued by the Mellon Institute in Pittsburgh showing photographs made of a man during an eight-hour sleep. It was found that he changed position 55 times, which is normal for the average healthy sleeper. Let us study these positions now in detail without actually getting into bed with the man. He dropped off in this position, which is called the supine curl, which he held for three minutes. Then into this, known as the kitten coil, which he held for 20 minutes, practically a record for the course. Then into this, or sleeping, sitting, standing crouch, which held him for 11 minutes. The best way to get into this position is to fall into it from above. This is a great favorite with drunks. The advantage of this position is that it gets him so close to the bed. Here he decided for smothering himself, which he did for eight minutes. And now into the ventrolateral sprawl, which amounts to doing a highland fling in bed. He liked this so well that he goes into a more difficult step. In this position, he is ready to hop out of bed at a moment's notice. Now, just to show what the normal healthy sleeper actually accomplishes in the way of exercise during the night, we will speed the camera up and run off his routine in fast motion. It will now be understood where the expression sleeping like a top comes from. It makes one wonder what the idea is of getting into bed at all. It would be less exertion to play a good game of handball. But now let's get back to the poor sleeper. He's dropped off for an hour or so, but pretty soon begins to feel that old thirst creeping up on him. An owl seems to have got into his mouth. <coughs> What's that? Just nerves, I guess. And then over to figure out the best thing to do. He's running three courses over in his mind. To get up and get a drink, to lie there and die of thirst, or to go back to sleep. The last is out of the question. The second would take too long. Oh, he might as well get the drink of water. Now the point is to walk into the bathroom and back without waking himself up completely. Walk very carefully with the eyes half closed in order not to get the circulation started. Hmm. Who left that door open? There we go. Now that glass ought to be right about here. No, no. Oh, pick that safety razor. There we are. Oh. Hold it a little closer. Now oh, there's no water in that. There's no water in that. <laughs> oh, careful, careful. Oh, no. Oh, don't spill it. There we go. Ah, boy. Now back to bed. Look out for those shoes. Whoop. <laughs> uh, now he's good and wide awake. And he stays wide awake until just before it's time for the alarm clock to go off. Then sleep begins to creep up on him. Very close. Very good. Slow my man. No sense in trying to go to sleep now. That clock's going to ring. <laughs> wow. 
Well, I guess <laughs> that'll be all for today. <laughs>